Well, hi there, Sax Call My Fans. This is Steve Goodson, and I am speaking to you from the Command and Control Bunker. It's ultra top secret here at Sax Gourmet World Headquarters, located in Sector R of New Orleans, the birthplace of jazz. And hey, Keith, how you doing, buddy? Uh, so tonight, we get, I've got a real important topic for you, uh, which is about choosing and dealing with a repair technician. That's something, as long as you play the saxophone, you're going to have to deal with technicians. But before I do, I, I, I want to share just one little thing with you. I had a, uh, an email from, uh, not an email, a Facebook message from a, a, a world-famous saxophone player, Eric Miranda from Cincinnati, Ohio. And Eric said, I am... Um, looked like a, you know, a crazy old grandpa or creepy old grandpa was the term he used uh, uh, for having these uh, young women in uh, our advertising. And uh, I, I just want to clarify something. Yes, I am old. I'll be 68 years old this year. And um, yeah, maybe I am a little creepy, but I want you guys to understand this. Uh, Sharon picks out all the young ladies. Uh, I don't. And uh, he, he said, you know, Eric Miranda was saying that I ought to be embarrassed that some of those girls were half my age. Well, they're not half my age. They're a third my age. So for that precious little snowflake, Eric Miranda, uh, what can I say? Okay, let's talk about, uh, about your saxophone and the nature of feeding, uh, fixing the instruments and all that. First, you need to understand that your saxophone has, uh, in a typical saxophone, about 575 individual parts. <clears throat> and there's some parts in there, just like the tires on your automobile and other things in your life, uh, that have got to be uh, renewed or at least uh, worked on regularly. And that includes the corks and the felts, uh, the pads got to be replaced every now and then. It's a good idea to replace the uh, springs every now and then. And, uh, you know, you got to also see about the screws. Now, occasionally, you're going to need to get your uh, neck tenon resized where it, where it fits the receiver perfectly. Hello, Donna. Uh, and uh, then you're also going to need to get the key work tightened up because, you know, where that stuff rubs, you know, part against part, over time, a little bit of the, of the metal goes away. So that's going to need to be swedged where we uh, tighten that key work up, and that's not a job you're going to ever do yourself. Uh, and, of course, like the automobile, it needs to be lubricated, cleaned, and all that, not to mention those times when you drop it or it falls off or something like that. And it damaged, boy, I've seen some nasty damage. Uh, but at any rate, um, you're going to have to deal with the repair industry in some form uh, at, at, you know, throughout your musical career. Hello, Electro. Glad to have you joining us. So um, let's uh, talk about a couple of things first that you can and should uh, do do yourself. Uh, so you ought to know the fundamentals of repair, whether you do it or not. Eric Demmer, hadn't seen you in a long time. Welcome, my friend. But uh, yes, I do want Carol uh, in the video. But um, you owe it to yourself to understand how things kind of work and what's going to be involved in fixing it. So I'm going to recommend a couple of sources of that information that you can uh, easily obtain. Um, the, the old standby in the saxophone business is the Eric Brand uh, Band Instrument Repair Manual. And the Free Tool Company has uh, reprinted that. You, you can obtain it from them. And it, the book was first written in the 1930s, but 95% of it is very true today. I know that was the first repair reference I've had. My hero, Dwight Anderson's joining us now. Um, but, you know, I learned a lot from that book uh, back when I was, you know, 14, 15 years old. My band director had a copy. The book I recommend most highly 
is a, a guide to repairing woodwinds by Donald Soska. And you can get that from our friends up at musicmedic.com. Uh, my good friend from the UK, Reg Tharp, has also written an excellent book on repairing woodwinds. Uh, I'm not sure where to get that one. I think that you can get it from Allied Supply. I'm not sure. Um, and another book I very highly recommend for all saxophone players is, um, is this is a translation from the French text, Giles Welcome. Um, it's uh, called uh, uh, The Saxophone is My Voice, and it's by Ernest Ferron. You can get that from Music Medic. Now, uh, if you don't like to read uh, all that, and, and you like to get this stuff visually, there is an excellent, as a matter of fact, there's two excellent DVDs out about saxophone repair. I mean, these things are fantastic. Uh, they are first saxophone repair uh, with Steve Goodson. Oh, that would be me. And then there's alternative saxophone repair, which is kind of some advanced techniques and some kind of off-the-wall stuff. Uh, you can get both of those from uh, nationofmusic.com. Um, now, another thing that we have now that uh, I didn't have available when I was uh, getting in the business and trying to learn how to do this stuff was there is a ton of video on YouTube about uh, the various aspects of repair. Now, that being said, there's a ton of bad stuff, but there's also some very excellent videos. So, uh, you know, by all means, take a look at that stuff because I want to encourage you to, if nothing else, be familiar with the repair process. You know, uh, when, when you go in uh, into the um, uh, repair shop with your horn, you know, kind of go in there uh, forearmed with a little knowledge. Now, we maintain on Facebook uh, a very active saxophone repair group. I think it's got about, I'm trusting memory, I'm going to tell you about 6,000 members from all over the world. And if you uh, want to learn, you can learn from everybody else. If you just have some questions, you can get in there and ask. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. I wasn't born knowing how to do this stuff. And, uh, you know, nobody else was, but we learn from one another. Now, if you're in the repair business and want to learn more, uh, my good friend, uh, Lars Kemser, uh, maintains an excellent uh, repair group for uh, professional musical instrument technicians. And uh, it's very good, but you you got to be in the business uh, before uh, Lars will, uh, you know, admit you. And, and there, there are a couple other uh, groups uh, around on Facebook. And, uh, you know, like I said, don't, don't be afraid to look around, see what you can learn. All right, now let's talk about some things you can do yourself before we get in there um, to, uh, yeah, okay, wait, wait, I gotta add these people, huh? look at all the add, yeah, online, okay, whatever, oh, look at all these people that want to be added, all right, let me take a minute, Adam, Giles, hello, Giles, um, and learn your own repair persons, <laughs> I'm gonna get to that, Giles, that's a very important point, but anyway, uh, some of the things you can actually do yourself is every now and then you'll just have a pad or two that needs replacing the high up pad or the low E flat pad or something such as that. You ought to learn how to do that yourself and uh, you ought to keep a spare pad in, with the proper size resonator uh, that's the proper size for the cup in your case. various parts and felts and all which means a single edge blade to cut that stuff with um, and uh, you know a little glue uh, and such as that. Now I'm not sure you're going to want to tackle replacing springs, but sometimes you don't have any choice in the matter. You know, you out there and 
you know, Butte, Montana, and suddenly a spring breaks. Well, either keep some rubber bands in your case, which a lot of guys do, or learn how to put springs in. But springs require some special equipment, and you can make a bad mistake. Another thing that's common is uh, the feet of key guards, or, or occasionally a post will get knocked off. have basic soldering skills, don't know what flux is and all that, then you better leave that to a professional. Some tools leak like. It's got LEDs and it's almost so bright it'll see. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to need that to find out why your horn won't. Oh, a rope line. LEDs, but they're coiled up. Whenever I was traveling. You also to talking about experience screwdrivers or your tenor. is a set of pad irons. And your pads should be ironed, and they may need to be re-ironed from time to time. If you keep your pads ironed, then they'll always be as taut as a drumhead, and you'll love the way it feels, and they'll be less likely to distort. And that's important. So if you don't know how to do that, learn how to do it. Uh, you're going to need some uh, a spring tool. Some guys use a old crochet needle, but really, you I, I know I've got, my spring tools all came from um, uh, Music Medic, and Ron Land, Dr. Ron Landis, my buddy, is here, uh, and his son, who was, I think Al was about <laughs> seven or eight years old, I, I made an exception to my rule, I gave his son saxophone lessons, and that's as talented a young man as I ever saw, and now, he just got his master's degree last week uh, in aerospace engineering, and I'm very proud of Ron, and I know uh, of Al, the, the son who got the degree, and uh, Dr. Ron and uh, his beautiful wife, Sandy. I, I, I know y'all happy, so congratulations. But um, get yourself assorted good pliers, and, and, and the best kind to get for working on your saxophone are what they call parallel action. Don't get the, sign, the kind that the jaws close like that, get the kind that the jaws close parallel to one another. So you can pull rods out and just keys and all that. Um, it's a good idea to keep those basic tools handy because from time to time, you're going to have to do something to your horn. All right. Now, let's. Oh, so, how thing to do mm -hmm. find uh, the professional player who does Play for money, but play for your repair. 
soon relax. person you are um kind of repair do in because Frank Pair shop, but pair uh, business all for them being in um. Call a musician. Oh, I, I know a membership from Alabama. A lot of questions. So that, they were very asking. Check out. Uh, most sell uh, now. Happy to show it off. It's an individual. their own shop, not who is a master uh, does repair uh, but where else and, and be sure and what's going on and here's what experience we have some uh, today my best behavior Uh, I've, you can go and get a little two years good at it. Smooth those um. That's a question you some of the you want to use and build your dentist, doctor, or your cat the long term. to expand the neck and then have also a neck shrinker another thing is something called now a dent machine 
an English wheel. Mean that. Now, a good repair shop also always, always, always offer you a choice of pads. Now, I hope that all of you will use our black kangaroo leather sax gourmet pads, but there's some other good pads out there. I'm a big fan of the... Uh, size and, and by that I, I repair shop we have sitting back there right now on my horn selling it Steve I'm sorry I don't have the I've got to order it. Uh, come on. Now, another thing that you need to carefully examine, and, and I'm big on this, is, is the springs that they use. Um, now, I think the very Those old soft stainless steel springs. Oh, all that. Use a flat spring. Um, use and have springs. Hello, John. Um, but the what parts I'll show you in a to see. want to see did you hear me it's the chief and that the smallest of uh Have a lot of different and I, you know, millimeters, but millimeter res and that's telling you lazy. They install them. Horn. These ask technicians will never. That, that, you know they. Your client. Now he wanted me to
bought his horn, and since then, uh, he's he's bought a bunch of horns from me. We've overhauled a bunch of horns for him. Now, case and run. pads in a home on the move do much of anything replace sprint but what you want to make sure They will get a little. Now, a situation where it's just a, that makes another key go. A very There and that make it time material. Theme, which is it's. In where the where. It's a slip. Tool of thought that we certainly shouldn't have. The transfer. But um, I damage the finish. Either in the box, possibly uh, clear, but I'm gonna miss. Iron that leather. Also, you need to be sure that that leather is just as taut, taut as a drum head. How you get the lead? I've seen cups that had a quarter inch again on my son, but but the, the keys ought to be lined up where that. Uh, cup sets right down on the tone hole top. And if they don't know how to do that, rings are retained. You know, the thing that you also Uh, those well, fine. Well, they keeping a good 
are so important. He's quiet. Oh. You're very high. Felt. Pigs. this all the time but lack of metal moving skills with too thick a cork there you talk to the guy and all that in the work always is over there do the work Well, hmm. Here's another thing. Of an organization. Membership lack. Thank you running. technicians in your community and so do that <laughs> the hell you say you're not NAP certified for anything Test anybody before they're allowed to. So just because somebody's a member of NAPA really doesn't mean a damn qualification for being. Like I said, you've got to develop a relationship technician just like you have with your dentist or your doctor or your lawyer or your accountant or your plumber or your electrician, all that. And my good friend at Famous Entertainment Lawyer, Giles Davis, my buddy, he brought up an important point that I've trained a lot of my customers to uh, abide by over the years, and that is always bring service will be don't build appropriate of course And in my case, I was so neurotic about it. I've got Walt Johnson cases of very rigid fiberglass, highly padded inside, and they go inside an anvil case. Um, most repair technicians will give you a gig bag if you ask for it, because that's just an <laughs> invitation for a bent body and a lot of dent work and all that. Your case ought to be good and rigid. It shouldn't be. the best that recommend sack track. 
circumstance, luck. P clamps. When clamps, it'll fix that. Be sure to oil. Now, when you oil the mechanism, always use a high evaporate, and what happen is that gummy black stuff will be in there on your rod. It'll actually slow. In, in the mechanism once a month, supposed to, then it'll actually clean them out, and uh, you'll be you'll be and that black stuff will just float out in the gaps, and you can dab it off. Be sure and keep your tone holes clean. If you keep your tone holes clean, the top of them, uh, your pads won't stick. It's a no-brainer. Powder is the best we ever saw. It smells like hippie girl. Thing and doesn't work. On over your horn and just tighten on so they don't back out. And if you've got a screw that's continually backing out, put a little bit of Loctite on it. Now, not that forever Loctite, but the temporary Loctite. Hello, Willie. Um, so, at any rate, those are some proactive things you can do. Now, I want to tell you that that relationship that you develop with the with the repair technician is, the, is one of the most important uh, tech, or, uh, keeps you in accordingly. Hold on. Never or bring them a jug of good liquor. Um, when you're out of town and, and you're on the road and something goes mm -hmm. using the, the, the that's about all I'm always I enjoyed talking to you. I hope you're doing it too. And uh, I want to remind you once.